Coming up today on Locked On Big Ten, Locked On Buckeyes host Jay Stevens is in to talk about all the biggest games from over the weekend in the conference, including Ohio State's loss to Oregon. What does it mean for the Buckeyes' college football playoff chances, and did it shake up the Big Ten power rankings at all? We'll talk about all of it right here on Locked On Big Ten. You are Locked On Big Ten, your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Big Ten, everything you need to know about the Big Ten Conference every single weekday. Listen in to, of course, Locked On Nittany Lions every single weekday, our Co-host on Tuesdays, Kevin McGuire, is in with us. I'm just going to hear pump up the show a little bit for Kevin here off the bat. Kev, what's what's going on on Locked on Nittany Lions today? And welcome here on a Tuesday, as always. Yeah, Nate, it's always good to talk to you every Tuesday. I'm looking forward to this because there's a lot of stuff going on. And uh, you may have heard, Penn State's got a pretty big game coming up this weekend against the Auburn Tigers. Uh, so you definitely want to tune in this week. We're going to do some crossover with our friends over from Locked On Auburn. We're going to try and do a crossover with Chris Gordy from Locked On SEC. We'll see how that all works out. But lots of coverage for this big game coming up this weekend. Uh, we also got thrown a little bit of a curveball. I guess we got some James Franklin rumors that we'll have to address. And I know we're going to talk a little bit about that at some point today. Uh, but also we launched our YouTube channel. Locked on Nittany Lines is now officially on YouTube. We've joined the YouTube community. So uh, if you're watching us on YouTube right now, head on over to Locked on Nittany Lines when you're done with this and check us out. Yeah, be sure to subscribe on the YouTube, on wherever you're listening to your podcast, to both Locked on Nittany Lions. Now again, just fresh on YouTube. If you're watching on the YouTube page now, go on over to their page and give them a subscription. Hit the subscribe button. You know what to do. And, of course, on this show, too, wherever you're listening in now, subscribe and help us out there, too. Uh, too. Well, let's start with the biggest news of what's going on right now, Kevin. There's a coaching vacancy and a big one over on the West Coast. And, of course, whenever one of those big names has that kind of a job open up like USC, there's all sorts of big names that get put into the rumors and big 10 names are always going to be some of those big names. We talked just before we went on, you, you said you saw PJ Fleck, James Franklin's there too. What are you thinking about just the initial reaction, the overreactions, these first couple of things people are thinking and names that are being connected to this big, big job that has to be quite honest, been open more often than people would like over there if you're a fan. Yeah, I feel as though we have been going through this circle for a number of years now. Clay Helton always seemed to be on a little bit of a hot seat, even when he was winning games. Uh, it was just kind of inevitable that at some point USC was going to make a coaching change. That's just the way it felt for a long time. Now, me covering Penn State a little bit closer, I have seen this uh, from a variety of angles where James Franklin is – always viewed as a coach that could, uh, as many people say, crush it at USC. And I tend to believe that he would be a really good fit at USC. Uh, so I know that's going to be popping up all over the, the, uh, the coaching rumor mill right now. But I feel as though this USC job is still a very good job. I just don't know if I trust the USC leadership to make the right hire. I don't know exactly what the logic is going into their coaching process. It is an important hire, though, for USC because they really cannot afford to mess it up with all the changes that are happening around the world of college sports. They need to make the right hire, whoever that ends up being, because uh, things are a little unstable right now if you make a bad coaching hire right now, especially in a conference like the Pac-12, um, where things are going pretty well in some regards right now, but not so well in others. Uh, so I just feel like USC is the program in the Pac-12. And if you are not winning at USC, then something's got to change. And that, of course, has been the track record for Clay Helton. So not at all surprised that they're making a coaching change. Maybe slightly surprised by the timing of it after two weeks. But if you watch that USC game on Saturday night, it was pretty brutal. And it just felt like the end of uh, the Clay Helton line as far as USC is concerned. So will be very interesting to see. We're going to hear some familiar names around the Big Ten that are going to be linked to various rumor mills. Where you mentioned James Franklin, you mentioned P.J. Fleck, though, which I saw on a, a graphic there. How about Urban Meyer coming back to college football, too? I mean, there, 
the speculation is already out there. It's going to be running wild. You mentioned USC right now, a very good job still, but USC isn't selling this as a very good job. It wants to sell it as still one of those elite jobs in college football. What do you think is the difference right now between the two? And how do the Trojans get back to being that kind of a program? What kind of coach does that? Well, it's got to be a coach who knows how to recruit uh, because USC has always found ways to recruit. I don't think recruiting is much of a concern for a program like USC, but if you have somebody who has been pulling in some good recruiting classes already or showing what he can do in the recruiting trail, it should not take long to recruit talent to go to that kind of a program, uh, especially with NIL. You're in the Los Angeles area. You figure there's a lot of uh, attractions to what is already, as far as I'm concerned, a sleeping giant caliber of a program. And I say sleeping giant because you, we have seen USC be very successful just in recent years. Uh, and it won't take long for the right coach to get USC to be back at the top of the Pac-12 and routinely in a playoff conversation the way that we were used to during their run under Pete Carroll uh, during the BCS days. I don't think it takes much to get USC back to that. So you do need a coach that not only knows how to recruit, but develop that uh, talent to get them to maximize their potential, because maybe that's one of the shortcomings that we've seen at USC. They brought in some really talented players and haven't always necessarily gotten the most out of them. And that is always going to be a poor reflection on the coaching if you make the right or the wrong hire, I should say. I don't know if USC is quite at the level of like a, a Michigan at, uh, where things are at, although Michigan we'll talk about in a minute now is a top 25 football team again. But it, it's just kind of one of those things where like in Michigan or a, a New York Knicks, maybe in an NBA comparison, this team has this reputation that it thinks it is of what it is. But I just feel like they don't have that same reputation around college football anymore. It's just, again, it's on the West Coast, it's a different story. But nationally, I mean, really just nationally, and we'll talk about this on the show today, being tops in the Pac-12 just hasn't been good enough the last few years. But right now, USC, I just don't feel like it's thought of in that same conversation as the rest of the blue bloods in college football as like say even in Notre Dame in that kind of a school that's been questioned and criticized for what it's done recently I don't think USC is at the same level of it's you argue biggest rival in that kind of a regard but it's just that kind of a job that I think like we said can get back there but you need the right guy to be able to do it and I don't think right now that it's at that level of an elite elite coaching position or program in college football but that's kind of part of the conversation we're going to be having on today's show with the ohio state loss to oregon how does the power in college football shift as far as who's in line for playoff spots and also what we think about everything in the conference as a whole the pac-12 is back in play for the first time in a while and we're going to talk about it here with kevin in just a minute right here on locked on big ten more coming up with kevin in just a second but first College football fans, daily fantasy is all the rage now, but it cannot always be easy to find daily fantasy for college sports. But you don't have to look any further now. If you're one of those college football fanatics, prize picks is daily fantasy for you made easy. I love prize picks, and I know you will too. They have the biggest variety of college football props, bets, Daily Fantasy, of course, as we mentioned, you pick through a lineup, pick an over-under, different props for individual players on where they're going to end up, and you can win big that way, win big the traditional way. Of course, it's all over at Prize Picks, and you can win right now. Head on over to their website, prizepicks.com, or go over to whatever your preferred app store is and go download the Prize Picks app. You're going to love what they have to offer. The show today is also brought to you in part by Rock Auto. Now, we've told you plenty about Rock Auto already. They've got all the parts your car could ever need at the prices that you're not going to be able to beat anywhere else. Rock Auto has, again, any sort of part for any make or model of car. And you're going to be able to find it by just going on to their website, rockauto.com. And it's real easy to search through and find exactly what you're looking for. Once you do, you can cut out that middleman of whether it be the dealership or the part shop trying to find through what exactly you need for a price that's going to be jacked up instead you can find the right price on a website that's easy to use 
and get it delivered straight to your door. You never have to leave your home. Head on over to rockauto.com and check out everything they have. If you end up using the service, of course, let them know that you heard about them from us by putting in Locked On in their little How Did You Hear About Us box. That's rockauto.com. And again, let them know that we sent you. Back here on Locked On Big Ten, alongside our Tuesday co-host, Kevin McGuire of Locked On Nittany Lions, I'm Nate Dickinson. You're listening into the program here where we're going to talk right now about just kind of the power and where it sits in college football at the moment, because there was a big, big shift with Ohio State's loss to Oregon over the weekend that I think is going to change really the way that this college football season is played and kind of give us something that, in my opinion, people have been asking for a while, some parity in this college football season, or at least the ability to get at least a little bit of parity. We'll see, it could end up very well still being the same teams at the end. It's still very early, but I think the possibilities are greater right now than ever. And it starts with that Oregon loss to Ohio State, because I kind of just want to set where I want the conversation to go. Right now we have an SEC, obviously competition that's going to be relevant as it always is. But we have Clemson with the loss already, Ohio State with the loss already, and Oregon pushing its way back into and pushing the Pac-12 back into the playoff conversation with now an undefeated record and a win over in Ohio State. So you're going to have a Pac-12 contender, a Big Ten contender, an ACC contender, an SEC contender, and a Big 12 contender pretty much no matter what, unless things get really, really crazy, whether it be, say in the Big Ten's case, an undefeated Iowa team, or a one-loss Ohio State team representing the Big Ten. One of those teams is going to be, if it's an undefeated Iowa team, definitely in. If it's a one-loss Ohio State team, having a very strong case to get in. I, I This is just the start of the conversation and a ramble I could go on. I want to let Kevin talk a little bit here. But this, I think, kind of opens up that web of possibilities, this loss by Ohio State, in a way that I don't think we've had anything this early in the season do in – at least since the way the season has been set up this way until this in the way that this format, this college football playoff has been in existence. This has not happened this early in the season. I don't think. Some shades of the 2007 season where it seems like there was a major upset at the top of the rankings of the BCS era almost every week for a good stretch of time. So this is certainly a wild start to the season because, as you mentioned, we have seen already a top five Clemson team go down. Granted, it was to Georgia, so it's not necessarily a huge shocking and uh, groundbreaking development. But still, Clemson lost a game. That's notable news before the middle of September. Ohio State has lost a game. I know it wasn't in Big Ten play, but all of a sudden, everyone around the Big Ten is taking notice of what Ohio State's not doing on defense. So maybe this Big Ten race is going to be a little bit more interesting as well as we're seeing some teams kind of emerge like Iowa, uh, Penn State's off to a, a 2-0 start, um, you know, and Ohio State's still going to be pretty good too. So all of a sudden, the Big Ten may have a few more contenders to just keep an eye on. Uh, and that, as far as this podcast is concerned, is wildly entertaining, I think. Uh, but yeah, I think the, the door has been opened a little bit earlier in the season than I think a lot of people were probably anticipating because as long as we've been watching this college football playoff, we've just grown accustomed to seeing Alabama in there practically every year. I know they missed the one year. Um, you know, Georgia has been in there a couple of times. Oklahoma has been in there a number of times. Ohio State has been a regular uh, contributor. Uh, and Clemson, of course, has been on their run too. So it, it's going to be really interesting to see who steps up, who takes advantage, and who puts the world in notice. Now, if you look at these AP polls right now, and I know this is just not even related to the college football playoff rankings, but you're seeing Oregon at number four. You're seeing Iowa at number five ahead of Clemson, ahead of a Texas A&M team that some people feel like you should be recognizing in the SEC. Um, you know, Cincinnati's still sitting there. I don't know where that's actually going to fit into the conversation when it comes time to make those decisions. I just feel like it's probably not going to go well for Cincinnati, but if you are Cincinnati, a future Big 12 member, by the way, uh, you're looking at Ohio State going down and Clemson going down and saying, hey, maybe this is our opportunity to work our way and force our way through that 14 playoff at the end of the year. Still a lot of work to do, probably still need some help, but this gives a little bit more reason for optimism for a program like Cincinnati 
or somebody else runs the table in the American Athletic Conference that hasn't risen up to that level just yet, maybe uh, that conversation can be out there. Maybe BYU is taking a look at what's going on. They've got a couple wins uh, against Pac-12 teams, including one against the top 25 Utah. So there are more opportunities right now in the middle of September that are actually feeling like they're legitimate. And, uh, you know, you get to the middle of September, everybody or a lot of people are still feeling pretty hopeful, but you still need a lot of things to go your way. Well, some things have started to go people's way. So still got a long way to go. But it's uh, the fact that Ohio State has already lost the game and Clemson has already lost the game. It's not impossible to think that they could lose another game somewhere along the way here. So uh, we could have a new entry into the college football playoff. And that to me is very exciting. Listen, the, the fact of the matter is, I, I think maybe one of the biggest things that this game, this individual game changes is, like, say you're a team like Clemson, those teams, Ohio State, Clemson, Alabama, Georgia, you throw in there to Oklahoma as well. They're at a point where they can say, we can lose a game and still control our own fate through the rest of the schedule, through winning the conference championship, being a one-loss conference champ, and just off of our season and team pedigree. With this loss now, if you're looking at Clemson, you're thinking, all right, if Oregon goes undefeated and Iowa goes undefeated and Oklahoma goes undefeated and Alabama goes undefeated, that's it. Like, we're out. Right. Game over. Like, it, it's, it, that, like that, that's the end of discussion. So that I, I think that one is a huge, huge change just all around. But also at the same time, you bring in just every other team that has like the Iowa kind of hopes. They are able to, in keeping a Big Ten context, say they have control of things right now. And that's something that Ohio State has pretty much held for the last five years. And that's a big shift, too. It's going to, of course, change things. And I, I have more even to say about just how many more teams I think get involved with things here. But really, I think that's one of the biggest things is that like a team like that, a team like a Clemson can't have a, a kind of mulligan now just by the way things have played out so early. I would say that as far as the Big Ten is concerned, if you already have two losses on your schedule, forget about it. But if you only have one loss and you don't lose a game the rest of the year, you're going to feel pretty good about your chances of being in the college football playoff at the end of the year. Uh, obviously, if there are four out of there, power conference undefeated champions that's going to be a little dicey but i still feel as though a one loss big 10 champion at the end of the year it's going to have an excellent case to be made because they're probably going to have a good number of wins against top 25 teams and that may be something that one of those other power conference champions who may have run the table outside of the sec may not necessarily have to their advantage so that's something to keep in mind too because the selection committee does value your quality wins more so than your loss or your, your, you know, your overall uh, games against ranked opponents. If it's not in your favor, you know, they're going to give you the, the benefit of the doubt, I think. Uh, I think that that's one thing that we have learned from the selection committee that's been a little bit more consistent than some other facets. So uh, just something to keep in mind there, too. So if you have no more than one loss in the Big Ten, I still think you're in a pretty good shape. As long as you don't lose a game the rest of the year, I think you're good. That's why Ohio State, certainly not out of a playoff conversation. Wisconsin either. I mean, if Wisconsin's only loss this year is the season opener, uh, they'll they'll be okay, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess, I guess my explanation wasn't perfect because, like, I mean, Clemson, obviously, it, if a whole bunch of teams had still got undefeated, they were – even last week still with their one loss not going to be in there. But I, I guess the, the luxury of being able to lose – that power shifted before it was Clemson. Now, now you could argue Oregon has it. They can lose one game, win the Pac-12 championship, say, hey, our one loss was against Ohio State, and be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Clemson's one loss against Georgia, if that ends up being the case. Pac-12 teams have not had that strong of an argument with a one-loss team in the existence of this college football playoff, I don't think. I I'm trying to go back and remember anything like that but now Oregon has that power I guess that's the power I'm talking about being shifted from I guess one coast over to the other but at the same time you have in every single conference really either a one loss big 10 champion in Ohio State being able to put up a really good resume against any other uh, conference that has a one loss champion out there 
whether it be Clemson, whether it be Alabama, if they beat up on each other, whether it be Oklahoma, even if they slip up in Oklahoma, now you could argue, has gained that luxury of being able to lose a game too. I, I just feel like everything's changed so much from before it was Ohio State, Clemson, and Alabama that had all the power in college football year after year after year. Now I feel like it's still a lot of the names we know, but I feel like the top of the top has shifted over to the other side of the country. I don't know if the big 12 has quite the same luxury, at least in Oklahoma. I still think if Oklahoma happens to lose a game that could hurt them significantly because it comes down to a one loss Oklahoma big 12 champion versus a one loss big 10 champion. I think the big 10 champion is probably going to have the, the more, powerful resume to back that's, them up a, that's a shift even wins. too i'd say like that's the pac 12 before that would have been the pac 12 that's at the bottom of that totem pole they move up and yeah. now the big 12 is at the bottom there well there's one thing we do know about the pac 12 is that it's going to eat itself apart at some point so <laughs> as impressive as a win that was for oregon uh let's see if they can you know take care of the business because the pac 12 isn't necessarily a conference where i think that it's uh it's hurting in many respects as far as the depth is concerned. So it's possible Oregon could run the table, but if Oregon does get tripped up somewhere along the way, it'll be very interesting to see how that all plays out. And it also will uh, de determine on uh, who gets in there, who's playing better in the second half of the season. Cause Ohio state could play a much better brand of football, especially on defense by the time the playoff rankings start coming out. So if Ohio state fixes their defense and all of a sudden they're shutting things down a little bit for opposing offenses, that could sway the conversation because teams do get better as the season goes along and some teams do get worse. So you know, how much weight do you put on a week two matchup when Ohio state is trending up and Oregon is trending down just hypothetically speaking. So another thing to just throw into the realm of conversation. I do think the games do need to matter though. So I do think that's, that's where the selection committee has to kind of find a happy medium or balance them out to determine uh, the, the proper weight for everything that they're putting into consideration here. Yeah, I guess that's what it all boils down to is that like this is all college football stuff that's happening that we're talking about and all college football kind of scenarios that are going to break down anyway. But it just it happened earlier in the Big Ten. You're just kind of waiting for Ohio State to lose if there's going to be a loss for the Buckeyes. And now it's happened. So we can get to fun, really entertaining football that really, really means a whole lot, a whole lot sooner. So. That I, I think is what's going to make this season, at least off the bat, a little bit just different. The fact that you have those losses off those big teams, the Clemsons and the Ohio States, to really kind of shake things up right off the bat. So Kevin McGuire with us here every Tuesday on Locked On Big Ten. You can, of course, listen in on Locked On Nittany Lions every single weekday as well. Kevin, before we let you go here today, remind us where you can get everything that we need to know about the show and, of course, everything that you do, too. Of course, you can catch uh, Locked on Nittany Lions on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcast. As I mentioned earlier, we are now on YouTube. So go ahead, check out the YouTube channel. Give us a subscribe. Give us those thumbs up. Uh, anything you can do to help us grow the channel. It's our first week on the YouTube platform. We're very excited about it. And a big game to look forward to this weekend as uh, Penn State is hosting Auburn. It's going to be a lot of fun because game day is coming into Happy Valley. It's getting the national primetime atmosphere. It's a whiteout crowd, so you know it's going to look great on TV. Very excited. Great time to get involved with the Locked on Nathan Lions podcast. You can also follow me on Twitter at Kevin on CFB. It's top 10 football team. You're going to want to know what's going on with it. Go subscribe to the Locked on Nathan Lions podcast. Subscribe to the YouTube, of course, brand new. And he's starting up and, of course, trying to get that following going. So go and help him out there. It's Kevin McGuire with us every single Tuesday on Locked On at Big Ten. Thanks for joining us again, Kevin. I'll be back in, in just a minute to wrap things up. Nate Dickinson here with Locked On. BetOnline.ag is back. Really never went anywhere. But back and better than ever for this football season with all the teams back on the gridiron again. As always, Bet Online is your number one source for all pro and college football action this season. And of course, with a new updated interfa interface on the site and even more odds, props, and contests, Bet Online continues to be your number one spot for everything betting football and always getting better too. As always, you can head on over to betonline.ag for a 100% promo code bonus. They're adding it up now. 100% added on, matched on to your first deposit. 
when you use our promo code locked on at betonline.ag. Go ahead and try it out. You get free money to play with by using our promo code. And again, Bet Online is always improving, getting better, and giving you more and more ways to make money. That's betonline.ag. Nate Dickinson here with Locked On Big Ten. Another thanks to Kevin McGuire of Locked On Nittany Lions for joining us as he does here every single Tuesday. Be sure to subscribe to his show, Locked On Nittany Lions, if you're a Penn State fan, and be up to date, as you are here with the Big Ten, on everything going on with Penn State every single weekday. Also, a reminder before we head out today, I got one final thought for you, but first... Betting on the Big Ten doesn't have to be a guessing game if you listen to the new Locked On Bets podcast hosted by your boy Q and handicapping expert Lee Sterling. Get daily picks, blowout specials, wrong team favorite picks, and Lee Sterling's lock of the day. Follow the Locked On Bets podcast brought to you by betonline.ag wherever you get your podcasts. Before we head out today, one final thought from me. I got to talk a little bit about Michigan just because... Listen, this might be my first season doing this, like, full-on covering the Big Ten Conference thing, but some of the love the Wolverines have gotten in this season particularly, particularly, all right, I got the word out there, it has been a little bit overblown, if you ask me, because Michigan at a top 25 team right now, listen, the Wolverines looked good, and they had the preseason ranking to suggest they could get here, but being that spot and seeing what I'm seeing about this team right now, because I read and I see the headlines of pretty much everything. I don't read everything. I'm not going to be someone or claim to be someone who does all of that stuff. There are people who read everything. I'm not one of them. But I I see pretty much all the headlines. I read the stuff that interests me most. And stuff I haven't been reading but have been seeing is a whole lot of this Michigan is back stuff after two wins. And two wins against teams in Washington and Eastern Michigan, Western Michigan, it was Western Michigan, yeah. That are just good, and the teams look good, but don't prove anything. Nothing at all. So, I feel like if you're a Wolverines fan, you know not to take this top 25 ranking all that seriously. I feel like if you're a Big Ten fan, you know not to take Michigan's top 25 ranking too seriously, but... Around the country, people might be saying, oh, Michigan might be starting to get back again. And to be fair, Wolverines could very well be there. Harbaugh could very well get this team back turned around to what it needs to be. But uh, I'm not going to believe any of it until I see a little bit more. Tomorrow we're going to have Asher Law on to talk about everything going on in the Big Ten Conference, of course, from now until tomorrow. And also we'll break down the Big Ten basketball schedules with Asher. They came out late last week. We'll talk to him about what exactly the puzzle pieces say about who will come out at the top of the Big Ten Conference. We're going to talk about that tomorrow with him. Until then, you're listening into Locked On Big Ten.